you get there in 2012, you debut in 2013. But let's talk about the training itself. Who were the guys there at the time who were hands-on with you and who were guiding you through, you know, your first steps into the business? Because I've written some names down, maybe Billy Gunn, Robbie Brookside, William Regal, Norman Smiley, Bill DeMotts. I don't know if I've got all those names right. All the above. Yeah. Every single one of them had a hand in Enzo, whether they want to admit it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Norman Smiley most definitely um, is the greatest. I, I just, I cannot even, like, I can't even begin to explain what a great man he is. Like, that guy is an unbelievable human. Um, a role model employee, a model uh, human. Um, if like I'm a young wrestler and I really love this business, some career paths are going to go differently, right? Mm -hmm. That guy's had a job in the WWE for a very long time and he deserves it. And if you really love this business like he does, um, like a lot of people do, like I do, like pro wrestlers do, he's got a job in it for life because of the relationships that he's garnered with people like me and every single person that he taught how to lock up your first lock up in this business, your first wrist lock in this business, your first drop kick. The first time you hit the ropes, that guy has so many first timers under his belt. We owe him the world and we, and we wouldn't have made it without him. So I, I really give that guy a lot of credit and a guy that gets a lot of heat. And a lot of people talk bad about him, man. And that's Bill DeMott. Um, man, I don't have any ill will towards Bill. He made our lives hell. Hell on earth. It was hell. You got to go through hell if you want to make it to the top, dog. You got to start from the bottom to get to the top. And a lot of people like to complain about what went on when Bill was there. And what I say to them is, you signed up for the fucking WWE, you bitch. How did you think you were going to make it? I walked through the door, and I never wrestled before in my life. So anytime I got in the ring and I was learning how to take an ass kicking, and I was literally getting my ass kicked, I was none the wiser. I just thought that this is how we make it. And that is how you make it. I'm a testament to it. The guy who took the most ass whippings, who shut the fuck up and showed up first and took every single ass kicking, ended up getting the loudest ovation in NXT to WWE call up history when he showed up on the scene. Was it because my life was made a hell worse than anyone else's at a time where I needed it? Maybe. I don't know. But I know that I had it really, really hard, really, really rough. And I'm not complaining about it at all because it made me the man I am. If I could get through that, I can get to raw. And when I get to raw, they're going to hear me roar, dog. I am going to fucking let it be known. And I don't have to tell you about the hells I went through on the come up trying to make it. Other people, I witnessed it. I don't ever need to speak on it. That's pro wrestling. If you signed up for this thing and you want to make it, you have no right to complain. Some days are going to suck. You know, they don't do street team anymore. I was on street team every day for a year. What does that mean? I wasn't on the card. I didn't wrestle on the shows. I set up merchandise. I sold t-shirts that had Seth Rollins face on it that said FCW. I set up the ring. I learned how to set up all four posts, made sure I got a shoulder under every post so that Roman saw it, so that Seth Rollins saw it, so that Ambrose saw it, so that everyone saw it because I don't know how to wrestle. I've never had a match for in my life. But you're not going to tell me I didn't touch all four posts when I set up this ring, when I tied the ring ropes. Y'all saw me do that because I'm not contributing to the show any other way. You're not putting me on. I'm not booked. But remember, when I started in this thing, I was with everybody who was there, right? Mm -hmm. and who got the loudest ovation when we showed up me and Cass okay but I learned when I got through the fucking door there how to do a wrist lock and a, and, and, and a drop kick dog so like I mean I was 
I was fighting for my life from day one, and you have no choice in that situation but to persevere, or it's sink or swim. You get thrown into the fire. You get signed by the WWE. You never wrestled before in your life, and these are the guys you're sharing a locker room with. You better figure it the fuck out, and you had to earn people's respect, and you had to do it the old school way, and people think that I didn't or out of their fucking mind. Like, you had to, <laughs> there's a certain level to shut the fuck up and look, listen, and learn that goes into becoming a pro. How did it change when A Train turned up to NXT? What were the big differences as far as the training regime and maybe it wasn't quite as drill sergeant like? Yeah, man, look at bro. Bill had his way of doing things, and uh, I think it made a lot of people stars. I think it made me a star. Is it like think- the pressure cooker thing? You know what I mean? Bro, if you could fucking make it under Bill, you're going to make it under anyone. I don't give a fuck who you are. Go, I mean, like, look at Seth. Look at what he's doing now. Look at Roman. Look at what he's doing now. Right. Like these people made it under Bill, you know, maybe give Bill a little bit more credit for being such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I think it was, I think it was, bro, you know what it was? I came from football and I had some tough coaches. I played American football. I played college football. And in high school, I had a coach that wouldn't let you get water at practice. So, like, it was tough. Like, in, in, and I grew up with kids joined the military after high school, didn't go play college football. I was the only kid that played college football on my fucking high school football team, right? The other kids, they joined the military and they smoked cigarettes behind the field house during practice. We played football on grass. We didn't play on turf. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not that old, but you know, you know how old we are, dog. So like I grew up in a different time where it was okay to be tough. You can't get away with that shit anymore. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. we live in a different world. So we're, we're, the la- up. we're the last of a dying generation. We are. We're dinosaurs, man. I grew up without a <laughs> cell phone. You know, the first time I got my first kiss, I sat outside that girl's house and threw little pebbles at her window to wake and we let her know I was there. You know what I mean? Dude, you should have had a, um, a boom box and the boom Peter, box, Ga- yeah, Peter the- Gabriel playing on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you had to meet somebody and depend on them to be there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, still phone boxes. Forget the amount of times I've stood outside of a shop or something for an hour waiting for someone who never was going to show up. Yeah, man. Oh, you the, get it, dude. Just yeah, being let down. Somebody, yeah, dude. It sucks, man. It's but great. It, it's character building, I'll tell you. But yeah, and I think that uh, there was a lot of character building in FCW. Uh, once you got into the building of NXT, and then you bring in... um. A train, as you mentioned, uh, it was just uh, at that time, man. NXT was popping now, dude, and you couldn't have a bad time if you tried. I mean, we're we're selling out houses, uh, shows are off the chain. Fergal, Samoa Joe, Kenta, Tyler Breeze, Ty Dillinger, FTR, Wesley Blake, Buddy Murphy, Sasha, Charlotte, Lexi. Carmella, Becky, Naya, me, Cass, Mojo, Baron Corbin. Um, you know, and that's just mentioned in a few. There's probably a lot that I left off in that list. So I'll, I'll have I mean, to you're get, talking I'll, to, yeah, you I'll know, have to get in post. I'll have to get like an entire like scrolling like credits list of people who've come out of that era. Um, I mean, it's the greatest Kevin Steen, Sami Zayn, Neville. Um, you know, and, and uh, that's. That's NXT golden black, uh, you know, and um, if you were on that roster and you were working you, the, the competition level at practice and every day in the ring, uh, promo class, uh, shows every weekend, um, you know, that's that was competition, baby. That's how the cream always rises. That's That was a, an incredible transition from FCW to NXT that I was a part of that Hunter had a vision for that he believed in that I don't think anybody could have really like, while we all believed in him and, and, and we heard him say that this is what we're going to do. You can't believe it till you see it. That goes in life. Right. Mm-hmm. so when it's all said and done and we look back at it and it's still a product, it's on TV. It has a TV contract. It's like, holy shit. You know, 